today's lesson is on CSEC Visual Art. We are focusing on the Reflective Journal. I am Michelle Bright Chinsey and... And I am Sean Lawton. Okay, so the objectives. Mr. Lawton? So by the end of today's lesson, it is um, expected that all of our students will understand you know, the requirements of the Reflective Journal. We want you to also develop an understanding of the approaches in ex executing the Reflective Journal, as well as to develop an appreciation for the Reflective Journal. Now, the introduction to the journal. Now, the Reflective Journal is a compilation of your theme approach to the artistic exploration and creation. Wouldn't exactly. you say? Exactly. Um, it covers your journey over a two-year period, um, starting in grade 10 and ending in grade 11. And so basically, that's what the Reflective Journal is. But what we'd like to do is we'd like to focus a little bit at this time on the importance of reflective journaling. Why is it so important that we need to engage in this particular activity? And so we're going to look at it through the lens of an old master, Leonardo da Vinci, who would have contributed to the world and most of the inventions that we enjoy today um, by journaling his ideas from 500 years ago. Oh, Mr. Lawton, you didn't. You're speaking about Leonardo da Vinci. You often think that I am obsessed with Leonardo da Vinci and these are some of the reasons. Did you know that from age 26, he actually wrote three pages in his journal until he was in his 60s? Can you manage, can you imagine the amount of information? The world, the world know a lot about technology and engineering because of his journaling practices. Exactly. And that's, you see, his approach to journaling is one of the things that I am most fascinated, most fascinated with. Um, you can see from the image here that he would have captured um, some images here with flying objects. Um, I am particular, fas particularly fascinated about this particular um, 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 sketch and the notations provided. He, um, his approach to journaling, he would normally go out and observe his natural world. He would observe the birds in flight and the, the physiology of the birds. Then he would document his observations and those observations would then be used to develop um, his approach towards doing a, a design per se for an object that perhaps could give man the opportunity to fly. And if he did not do that, today we would not necessarily be benefiting from the opportunities of flight in aircrafts. Um, I really like one of the things that he makes reference to in terms of his approach and he documented this. He said, first I do some experiments before I proceed. He goes and he makes sure that he gets the facts. He's informed because he once said that if you go and do a painting without being informed by the science and the math, and the cultural relevance of what it is you're depicting in your artwork, then technically you will be very much like a mirror. You're just reflecting what is seen out there, but you're not understanding the mechanics that ties the whole together. Today we have been discussing CSEC Visual Arts, the reflective journal, and at this time we are going to be looking at the overview of content that we will be exploring in the reflective journal. So the Reflective Journal content, it is simply this. Cover design and title, table of contents, artistic statement, expressive form, bibliography, and glossary. We call it definition of terms. The expressive form content really is just like your drawing, your painting and mixed media, your graphic design communication, printmaking, 3D, textile or so on any two expressive form that you have chosen to do for the csec visual arts sir all right so what we're going to be doing now we're going to be approaching this presentation in a chronological order in terms of what should be placed in the journal first and so we're going to be looking now at the cover design and the title of the journal 
Um, it is very important that what you put out there in terms of your cover design is actually designed in such a way to stimulate an interest in your audience to, to want to explore the content of your, your, your journal. You really shouldn't judge a book by its cover, you know, but unfortunately you're being graded for it. So you have to pay attention to these. The title, typeface, pictorial design exactly. all together with your theme. And you want them to work in a very strategic way. Um, the, 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 the typeface that is selected to communicate the ideas related to your theme or the concepts that you're promoting should be fitting, should be befitting um, those ideas. So for argument's sake, if you're trying to, to communicate something about obesity, we would want the typeface to, to match that, that concept of obesity. The typeface along with the pictorial design, they work hand in hand because the typeface will actually help to enhance the communicative ability of the images and vice versa. So these are some important things that you want to take into consideration as you go about designing your title page. Typeface design is important. But you have to remember, some of you are actually hand building your covers, and that is fine. But please remember, the pictorial design as well as your text must match your theme. Exactly. I do appreciate that. And um, at this time, we're going to be moving on to another aspect of the reflective journal, which is the artist statement. Now, the artist statement, this is where you, the artist, gets a, an opportunity to introduce your work and yourself to your audience. And this is very important. If people don't understand you, it's difficult for them to appreciate you and appreciate your work. And so we want to ensure that there are certain key factors that you want to include in your artist statement. So, Mr. Lawton, you know, I like to think of the artist statement like the content, the body of a cover letter, mm -hmm. right? For the journal, you're going to be looking on uh, answering a few questions. For example, why did you choose visual arts? The reason for choosing the expressive forms. And last but most importantly, why did you choose your theme? Because the theme is the thing that's going to bind the entire journal together from cover to cover cannot be understated this thematic approach to your artistic journey um, is is like the main thread in the tapestry of the entire journey very important that we are guided by this okay the other aspect of our journal that we'll be looking at today is the history of our expressive forms um, it's very important that you try and capture a historical overview of the expressive form that you have selected to represent yourself and your ideas out there in the world. Um, some fundamental things that you want to make sure that you include, let's say for argument's sake, if you are, uh, let us say, working in the expressive form drawing, the fundamental um, ideas related to drawing should be explored. For example, what are the basic ideas relative to drawing? Who pioneered it? What pillars did they establish? So you can actually come and benefit from their explorations and, and, and the, the findings in terms of their experiences with drawing. Um, you also want to ensure that you explore the cultural relevance of drawing. That is, with this drawing expressive form, how does it match in the Jamaican context? How does it help to, to, to give our spin on what drawing as an expressive form is as we put our work out there in the world? And the last consideration that we want to look at is the contemporary representation of these expressive forms. Um, so, would you like to elaborate on that? Sure. For example, Traditional paintings, accepted traditional paintings were done in oil, mm -hmm. you're using brush on canvas. Yes. Today, what are we painting on? It's way more contemporary now. There are artists that are painting on wood mm -hmm. and displaying it, painting on walls, right? So how is painting applicable? And you do this for every expressive form. You're looking on the historical part of it. You're looking on the cultural part and then the contemporary part.
Yeah. What I appreciate about this approach, um, uh, this aspect of the journal is actually that it informs what it is that you're doing. Because you're looking at the expressive form through all of these lenses, it helps you to kind of position yourself and, and, and to determine how you as an artist will go forward um, as a practitioner. Now, the other aspect of the journal that we'll be looking at is the biography of the artist. So, so far what we would have looked at, we looked at the artist statement, your statement, then we looked at your exploration of the expressive forms. And now we're actually going to be looking at the artist that you would have selected to, to for want of a better word, to hold your hand and, and, and bring you into the realm of artistic creation and, and possibly out there in the, the um, um, industry. You know, if I'm going to write about you, Mr. Lawton, as an artist, I'm going to need to know a few things. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm going to know a little bit about your background. I'm going to know why you chose to do art. I'm going to know your education. I need to know your education and background. Mm -hmm. I need to know your influences. I need to know if you had any exhibitions. And it's just simply that just something about the artist exactly right and background and in relation to your theme as well exactly and i, I like that because when you do this biography what you do is you're, you're capturing a historical account of the artist's experiences his successes the failures the challenges everything and then this artist's experiences will now help to to aid your own personal experience as a practitioner in visual arts now, an, an important appendage to um, writing the artist's biography. You must select pieces of works to demonstrate what it is that about this artist that fascinates you and, and to establish the connections between this artist's work and how you intend to have it inform you. It's not enough to just choose an artist because you're doing painting, for example. You choose any artist, no something about the artist and his creative process must be related to your theme it could be as again his theme versus yours it could be the technique that he's working on that is similar to yours cultural relevance or some alignment with some specific art movement or style exactly um i am just grateful for the opportunity that we have to share this information because it's really important that you you, you tie in, you know, that interest, the interest that you have that guides you to this particular artist in your work. So you can see the connectivity. Um, the, the next thing that we're going to be looking at in the journal is the critical analysis. So for the critical analysis, it's basically when you think about it, is a, a, a con it's a constructive way or a strategic way of evaluating artworks. It's a way of pulling the artwork apart into bits and pieces and so as to make sense of each piece so you can properly evaluate what is happening. That's basically what it is. And it has four simple steps. Four simple steps. One, you describe. You then analyze. You interpret and judge. We're going to break it down for you. When you're doing the description, you want to state only facts about the artwork. It's like, as Mr. Lott normally say, you're trying to describe a piece of work to Ray Charles. Exactly. For those who don't know, Ray Charles is blind, right? So you want to give him a feel of the work. You're stating only facts. When you reach the analysis stage, you're going to say, how did the artist do this? You're going to the mechanics of the work. Exactly. How? You want to say, how did the art artist achieve these principles using these elements? Then you're going to interpret. The interpretation is basically your own feedback on the piece. You need to cite a few facts, but it's really about what you think about the piece. What exactly is the artist trying to say to you as the viewer? Now, when you judge the piece towards the end, you want to judge the piece saying what was right about the piece, what was not so right about the piece. You want to expand on that? Exactly. So at this particular point in time, it's important for us to remember that thing that we mentioned earlier, the thread that binds the tapestry together, the theme, because let us say for argument's sake, 
you were looking at a painting that was it's a beautiful landscape rendered in vibrant colors and it's just tranquil and inviting and you describe that for Ray Charles and Ray Charles said, oh, I can I can see what you're talking about. And then after that, you pull it apart and you start to describe or analyze for him what it is that makes up this painting. So you'll pro perhaps say that, oh, the mountains are blue in the back and then you have some lush green grass coming to the mid-ground, the foreground has such and such and so on. And the title that this artist chooses to accompany the work would be uh, destruction in in Babylon <laughs> that would be off in in every possible way and so consideration when you're judging the artwork you want to make reference to what is the title of this piece that gives you some indication as to what it is that the artist intended to communicate in this composition the the, the overall composition as well um, you want to look at the use of you know the the principles and elements the formal aspects of the of the putting together of the of the piece let us say the same landscape painting you would perhaps say though the artwork is masterfully rendered and ex expertly executed it has this it has that and wonderful the what is come the ideas being communicated is not in relation to the theme and as such the artwork could not be deemed as successful in communicating the desired um, ideas you know that you just described three theories though emotionalism formalism and imitationalism all of that in one at the end of your critical analysis of the artwork you also want to do a comparing and contrasting you have five pieces of the artist's work so you're doing a full critical analysis of one and then after which you are going to compare and contrast the others with this one piece of work the similarities and the differences yes exactly and this again cannot be understated gives you an opportunity to demonstrate some linkages with your area of interest as an artist so if it is that when you you present the artist's work you want to to look at um the the, the, the technique for example if that is what you're focusing on you want to, to state that note that the artist is working in a, a whimsical kind of way and i like that sort of approach to art making so i'm going to be using this as an informed premise to guide to 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 as a point of reference for want of a better word to help me to to de make decisions as to how how i am going to go about creating my pieces and so that's basically it for the critical analysis now this part of it also is very useful this aspect of the reflective journal the reflection is of paramount importance and again what you want to do for this part of it you want to also not just reference your own journey but you perhaps would want to reference the journey of the artist as well to help to tie the whole experience together so what were the challenges that you as an artist encountered during this two-year artistic journey what are some of the challenges and how were you able to resolve some of these challenges yes that's basically what you're doing i like to think of the reflection all about me right what uh, as you said before what you've learned what were your experiences what were your challenges right and overall your successes with art you can do a reflection after each expressive form as well as at the end of the journal yes exactly um, the next um, idea that we'd like to look at, or our next aspect rather, of the journal that we would love to look at is a very critical, critical part because it has some ethics that is associated with it. Um, I know at times that we're tempted to go and borrow the ideas of, of the intellectual property rather of other persons and present them as our own. This is unethical. We're actually going to be looking at the, the bibliography at this point in time. And it's just a list of citations that t tells your, your reader where it is that you get your information from. And the bibliography is really important because it validates the work that you're putting forward. 
it validates it in in some profound ways and there are two main um approaches to doing your bibliography that that would be acceptable um as csec students you have the mla format and the apa format it is common practice doing the reflective journal recently for you to collect most if not all your information online it's not good enough to just quote a url you have to break it down and record a few things for example you're going to look if it's it's from an article journals books interviews or any other text you want to make it clear so just don't put down the the url there it's not enough so you have to break it up while you're doing that you depending on the method that you're using you want to mention the artist's name title of article or document source publication date and date the artist the the information was retrieved excellent all right so our final um aspect of the reflective journal that we would love for you to focus on at this particular point in time is the glossary of terms now do not underestimate the importance of your glossary you remember when we started out earlier we spoke about you introducing yourself through the artist statement introducing yourself and your work well the the glossary actually helps persons to understand who you are it's basically a list of works that is is relative to the expressive form that you have selected to 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 express yourself as an artist and what it does it gives the reader definitions that are associated with the content that you are writing about and i know sometimes persons would like to go and pick up any definition that they find online and they, 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 they insert it in the glossary not paying attention to the fact that the meaning that is documented is not connected to visual arts it's actually in relation to another discipline so we need to be mindful of that we need to ensure that as we research and we we, we try to get this information together that we are informed relative to the jargons that we use and to the working definitions in relation to your chosen expressive forms ensure that the words or terms in your glossary actually is directly related to your expressive forms you're doing something on painting unless something in ceramic is related to painting then i really shouldn't see it in there okay exactly all right so let us sum it all up at this point in time we're putting um, it all together all right so it's a thematic approach from cover to, to cover. cover and we would have looked at today the cover design and the title we would like look we would have looked at the table of contents we would have looked at the artist statement the expressive form content the bibliography and the glossary those are some important things that we need to consider as visual arts students and at this point in time we wish to just you know reinforce some concepts that we would have covered today in this presentation you know you had mentioned something about the the bibliography mm -hmm. what we did mention is that if you did an interview then you should record that in the bibliography exactly you're doing reflections yes you need to mention that in the bibliography exactly yes. and just to tie things together as well i like to to help us to understand that the theme cannot be understated no. it's it is the the thing that drives it narrows down your focus as an artist and it drives your creative approach towards um the the, the the execution of your artworks it also eliminates vagueness and misinterpretation on the part of the person who is marking the journal exactly. right and it's important too when you you're going about um looking at your themes that you are very strategic in how you go about um developing such um i know that sometimes we are tempted as students to just pick an idea and run with it but there are no personal connections to it and so midway our creative approach we decide that oh you know miss 
I think I'm going to change, you know, because I don't like this again. Yes. We want to make sure that there are some emotional ties. Look at things that you are interested in, but also look at things that has cultural relevance. Just a message for the grade 10 students, Fort Farms. Listen, do not wait until you're in your fifth form year to actually start putting your journals together, right? You want to start right now. Every day, the two page. Every time you're doing a piece of work, ensure that you are making entries. Remember, your sketches need to, your, the profile of your work, you need to have the before, the during, and the after. Take good pictures. Use whatever image cap capturing device uh -huh. that you're using um, to document them well within the journal. Exactly. Another tip for you out there. Um, and, and, and it's just to help you to understand how you go about developing a theme to take an idea from concept to actual artwork. Um, we like to call it unpacking the theme and we like to just share a few tips with you because as said before, this is perhaps one of the most important aspects of the journal. So uh, when we're un unpacking the theme, one of the things that we need to first do, if you have an interest, let us say, in culture and, and, and it, as it relates to entertainment, and you, you are a fan of music, let us say it's reggae music, um, you may want to document that interest. And then you perhaps would like to look at all, document all the ideas, or 10 ideas at least, that relates to this particular um, theme that you are going to be approaching. And so those first 10 ideas that come to your head that's documented, what you would then do as your second step is to create three to five sketches of each idea or visual for each idea. And this is just to work out the composition of these ideas, what it would possibly look like. Then after doing that, you are now going to select from those sketches and from those documented ideas, which of these I'm going to be using in terms of a composition to create a final piece. So let us recap some of what we did. Let's go back here. History. Remember, the history is very important. Mm -hmm. You're looking on some background fundamental mm -hmm. things about the artistic expression. Mm -hmm. You're looking on cultural relevance, contemporary. You're going to choose your artist and you're going to choose it well. Remember, just don't choose the artist because the expressive form that he or she is working with is similar to yours. No, you want to choose the artist based on some things like their thematic approach, their style, their cultural relevance. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, as, as, an, as, as, an, as an artist, one of the things that I normally do um, I try to be as informed as I possibly can and I, I don't know about you Miss Chinsey but I normally I like the works of, 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 of Jean Pearson um, for one because it's influenced by Africans and it's influenced by our personal culture as you look at the images on the screen here we see the influence of the Rastafarian so what um, you're saying it's relatable it is relatable and that's what we need you to think about when you're choosing the artworks don't choose necessarily choose somebody from way across the seas if you can't relate to what they're doing yes exactly um and and as as, as stated before wait a mm -hmm. stated before um cannot be understated the critical analysis now as a part of your journey one of the things that we try to encourage students to do is to focus on what it is that you're doing and evaluate the creative process as you go along. And this critical analysis approach to, you know, reflection is very important because this is what you will actually use to determine what it is that you need to change, how you can improve in certain areas and what it is that you're, you are going to be re representing ultimately in that piece of artwork. And I, th I find, I, I don't know about you, Chinsi, but I find that that step, analysis and interpretation, is key for me, at least. Because when I put a piece of work together, when I look at a piece of artwork, 
the first thing that my mind does after discerning the image in front of me is I, I start to pull it apart. I start to pull it apart and I start to pull it apart and, and make, you know, informed conclusions about what it is I'm looking at based on how well this artist used the building blocks, which are the elements, to represent the principles in the artwork. But the doing an critical analysis, doing a critical analysis shows a little more than you just going and painting a pretty picture. Yeah. It's actually showing that you have done some some in-depth studies exactly about the piece of work and your expressive form exactly exactly and so we like to 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 have persons focus on that um another aspect that i think that some students might not necessarily um take seriously is this aspect of the reflection um you, you know sometimes we are tempted to just do a little um two minutes um, scribble on the paper to say, well, you know, um, this journey was successful, all my pieces are great, and, and so on and so forth. But people are truly interested in, in some of the challenges that you actually go through, you know. And they are also interested in what have you learned from this journey. And as you document what you have learned, basically what you'll be doing is you will now be mirroring the example of a Leonardo da Vinci by putting out there the knowledge that you would have garnered from your personal journey and establish a pillar upon which other students or other aspiring artists can look to as a reference as they seek to, you know, establish their creative voice in the creative industry. That's correct. Exactly. And so the last thing that we would like to look at as a part of our recap um, here is this image here produced by Leonardo da Vinci. You're going back to Leonardo da Vinci? I am definitely going back and to Leonardo say, da Vinci. And you I was obsessed. And no, I am a convert. <laughs> uh -huh. I, am, I am no a convert. <laughs> I have done some research and this man is... Is he is a genius in his own right. Talk to me, and Mr. Long. What, <laughs> and I cannot be overstated what I like about his process and his approach that we can take a leaf from his book, in for want of a better word, is that anything Leonardo da Vinci documented was properly researched. And his I guess his method of research largely um, was, was informed by observation. And so we stated before, but cannot be overstated, that he would look at the, the things out there in the natural world. Here's and a fun he, fact. Here's a fun fact. Yes, sure. Did you know that he was the first to actually put illustrations together for medical magazines or books? I actually did figure that out. Did you know that him being able to do that was by virtue of the fact that he would have um, dissected, I think, Cadavers. 30-something corpse. Yes. And he would have drawn images of the bone structure, the, 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 the veins. He would have drawn images of... And he would have not just drawn it, but as seen here, he made notes to himself of the things that he's actually observing. And so, again, we wouldn't know anything about this if it wasn't for his journal. Exactly. We want to bring that point home. If it wasn't for his journals, we wouldn't know. We yes? would not know. And so um, I am truly grateful for, you know, his contributions. And we hope that, you know, we will see some of our Jamaican students, you know, putting things out there that would be considered comparable to that of a Leonardo da Vinci. So as we approach, you know, just our own little practice, how has you know his example by you know as a reflective practitioner reflecting on why he's doing what he's doing how could that help us to improve our cover designs for example yeah remember that your cover design as i said before don't have to be printed right it mm. can be samples of your own work mm -hmm. on the cover itself mm. right it can be something that you made but to ensure that you have done the cover well, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that text is there and 
it balances well with the images. Exactly. And I like to also give us an opportunity to, to, to understand as well that the application of theory, because Leonardo said that you must cite reason first. What is the reason for me selecting this color, this shape, placing it in this place or that place? What reason is driving that, that, that creative process? What do you intend to communicate? And as you are able to identify those driving reasons, then we will understand now how to use the elements in a very strategic and deliberate way to communicate those ideas that's correct and so there are no aspect of the the journey where you can just do something arbitrarily because you know you can do it well this is not just about skill it is about you expressing yourself in an academic way and contributing to the creative industry by the knowledge that you would have generated over this two-year period. My final point on the journal is this. You have two years to do it. You take your time. Start early. It is going to be judged as your third piece. So you have expressive form one, expressive form two, and your third piece would be your journey. Okay, so. Okay. And you know, I like, I liked what you pointed out earlier. And, and as you said that, it reminded me, I'm hoping it's reminding our students at home that Leonardo did three pages of journaling every day. Until he was 67, I know Until this. he was 67, I know you know this, and thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. I now know this, so I can share it with everybody at home. <laughs> but what is important about that, you think about what that would have done to the mind of that man because it, what it simply means is that every day he would be reflecting on a new body of knowledge that informed all of his inventions all of his artworks and everything that he did and practiced and we hope that this is something that we as a people who intend to impact the creative industry can actually take on as a part of our practice and as a part of our normal day. Students start journaling from grade 10. Please be like a Leonardo da Vinci. Do three pages per day. And by the end of the, 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 the academic, the, the academic um, period, what you will have is a substantial journal with meaningful information that has direct, clear, specific connections from artists to your work and to the content that you are actually placing in it. Okay, that's all today for CSEC Visual Arts, the reflective journal. We hope you have grasped some of the points we discussed. You can catch a repeat today of today's lesson on JNN Today at 4 p.m. and in the school's not out highlights on Saturday between 1 and 4 p.m. right here on TVJ. It's it it will also be on video demand. Yes, on, on one, one spot, spot media. media. We, we will be uh there will be a midterm break starting tomorrow, May 20, and will run until Wednesday, May 27. But you can watch past lessons on your YouTube channels. Remember, CXE starts July 27, so keep studying, keep preparing those journals. Until next time, I'm Michelle Brightensee. And, and I am Sean Lawton.